Miramar Titans, uh, second ranked team in AA men's. Steve, you had a couple of ball games this year. Uh, one close one, one that was uh, a little bit uh, farther away, I guess, than you would expect to have. What have you done this week to prepare your ball club for the St. Stephen team? Well, we know that uh, they're well coached, and we know they're going to be strong in a half court game. So uh, we expect to see a little bit of zone, a little bit of man to man. And I think against St. Stephen, just have to be patient. Uh, they're not going to uh, give us any pressure, I don't think. They just want to try to beat you at the half court game and, and play, you know, play power basketball, dump it inside. Uh, uh, we're, we worked hard all week, and uh, we expect to see a little bit of everything from it. Right. Uh, how do you, uh, a guy like Perry, for example, uh, who's a good outside shooter, can take the ball. Uh, a guy like Wilson, who can create all kinds of problems. Have you done anything special? Talked to anything, or just talk to these, uh, to your players about uh, how to handle these people? Yeah, I, I think if we if we single out one guy and they're starting five and, and put too much emphasis on them, then I think the other four can hurt you. So right. no, we didn't we didn't treat any any one of them special. Uh, you know, Wilson, we have to try to prevent him from going elbow to elbow, and uh, if we collapse too far, then Perry will shoot the three pointer. So uh, no, we didn't key in on anyone spe yeah. specifically. They're a five man crew, and that's why they're successful. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Steve, and uh, best of luck to you in the ball game. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next, we have uh, Coach Donnie Walker coming in with us. <laughs> Donnie, how you doing? <laughs> Good, Greg. Coach, last ball game. Is that the rumor? Last ball game. For a while. For a while. For a while. So what? Do you, I just uh, Coach Walker has uh, decided to hang it up for a while, as he said. I'm going to ask him one question. What are you going to do, Don, uh, as a result, to try and stay in basketball? I'm going to go down and work in the uh, minor development area. We have a great need in our area for minor basketball. At the present time, we do not have an existing program. Um, so as a result of that, we've had uh, some inconsistencies with our varsity program. All right. So I'm going to try, try and go down and establish a, a very good minor program for three or four years. And we're trying to tie it in with our recreation department. We've just hired a new rec director, and we feel that if we can get uh, him involved with that, that that'll help with that consistency problem that we've had over the years. Okay, tonight's ball game. You, uh, I think, I feel you have personally one of the, the top four ball clubs in the province. Doesn't matter whether it's double A, single A, triple A. Okay, how are you going to handle the Titans? Well, we've had, uh, we played them twice this year. We've we won both games. One of them was very close in Tantamar. I think they're they're a quality bas basketball club. Um, they've got good perimeter players. They're, they're post players. I'm not sure if they're as strong as we are, but. Uh, uh, Having played them last year in the final and us winning quite handily, I, I think they're out for a little bit of revenge th uh, this year. We're going to try and play good, solid man-to-man -man defense. Hopefully we're going to handle their pressure. Um, we're going to put as much pressure as we can on their perimeter players, especially Garrow. Nat right. Garrow, he doesn't score a lot, but he really makes them go. Right. If, he's, he, if he's allowed to penetrate and get to the foul line or below, I think we'll be in trouble. So we've got a key on him. And I think Tony Perry has been playing well for them lately. He's their, one of their big guys inside, and I hope I hope we can key on him. Yeah, all right. Well, best of luck to you, Don, and uh, we'll talk to you. Thanks very much. And now we'll be back to Ken and Ken, Kevin and Ken. Today's score, Detroit 5, Chicago 0. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're five minutes away from start time of the next game for the AA Boys Final. We've got the St. Stephen Spartans tonight against the Tantramar Titans. Candy Town Spartans, Donnie Walker, big wave at the end of the interview, Coach. You're still hamming it, and I know you're going to play the tape again. He says Cable had played the tape last year, and he said except for the fat guy that did the interviews, he said it wasn't a bad tape. The boys had a good chuckle now and then. Well, I'll tell you, Walker, you ain't getting any older if you keep it up, because I got some hitmen in my classroom that are coming after you. That Rick Stalker does a nice job, but, you know, when you get two good-looking guys like Chapman and Walker out there, it is time to maybe retire when the hair starts getting our color. <laughs> this is going to be a good ball game, my friend. Both teams well coached. Steve Chapman used to play for Mount A. Good ball player, Kev. And Donnie Walker could play basketball anywhere at any time. And I can safely say that this is going to be a run-and-gun show, and with Brian Whitfield and Seward, Nielsen out there uh, refereeing, it will be controlled properly. 
From what I understand, Ken, uh, St. Stephen's got quite a team, and they uh, they gave KV a good run when they played them this year. Yeah, one point or two points in OT or, you know, something like that. What do we got for starters here? We'll see him a couple of times here, Kev. Uh, Wilson, good guard, playing a... Uh, he can, he can play small forward as well. Johnny Casey, Trevor Perry, Mike Scott. Now, there's a name I don't think we should forget. Wayne Hasty's a good ball player. By the way, Scott is a cousin to uh, Aaron Scott. Ned, Ned Garo or Garou will play for uh, Tanamar, Becker, Perry, Finley, and G. Garou. So uh, I think we should have two brothers again. Do we have any more brothers here? Have you covered me carefully? Yeah, I think that should be it. What about this guy? Can we get names for him? Do you want to be checked? Yeah, it's Jonathan Heed. Heed, okay. Well, I'm glad you're here doing the color work with me, baby, because I'll tell you, it's been a long time since I've seen you. I suppose you've already eaten, have you? <laughs> so you all set, ready to go? Yeah, no, yeah. Yep, not too bad. 3.40 before we start the ball game. The Spartans have got a quite a picture here, sponsored by our funding cable station. And Kevin, every time I look at Walker, he's under a candy sign, St. Stephen Candy, <laughs> candy Town, home of the first chocolate bar. Well, I'll tell you, Walker, if you can get me the, the next one, I'll take it. Call Jimmy Purcell up and tell him I asked about it. I, Kevin, this is a lot of fun when you get to a game like this, and a darn good crowd for the weather, boy. Yep. Could you tell me how the roads are? Uh, are not, yeah, they're not too bad. Uh, the snow, the only thing is that there's blowing now. The wind's quite bad. The snow's starting to let up a bit. So you mean it's been snowing all the time I've been here? Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Do you know anybody that runs a snowplow or is a snowblower? <laughs> Do you know anybody at all who would talk to me after six basketball games? <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know who's out in the truck, but if it's Guy Lafleur doing this one, he comes in in front of three or 400 people, and you missed it. Just before the game starts, he said, Cable, come here. I said, yeah. Chicago 0, Detroit 5. And then he points to everybody. This guy's for the Hawks. Holy mackerel. You know, where do you go from there? Yeah, well, they, yeah, they took her on the chin this afternoon. Well, I hope the satellite dish is working when I get home because the loafs are on if they win. They're still on the road, though, aren't they? Yeah. They've had a good road trip. Yeah. Dave Morrell, and you know Dave Morrell, Kevin, from being around here a while, is going to be my guest on Jock Talk for three weeks, starting the first uh, weekend of April with Andy Jeffrey, another sports fanatic. Three weeks of hockey talk on Jock Talk, and maybe we have four seats, my friend. You are coming. Oh, excellent. I don't know if you've ever seen the show, but you could be one of three that has seen it once or twice, and you'll understand why I have a sore neck. By the way, I, I want to talk to Dave Sylvia. I used to play nets in hockey. I get down there, get ready to introduce the game, and the red light comes on. Now, is that a sign that they understood that why I quit hockey? Because I got a sunburn in the back of my head. That's embarrassing, man. It's supposed to be the green light to give you a cue in the red. Oh, yeah, real funny, eh, Kevin? What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, laugh. Go yeah. ahead. I've got a game with Russia coming up soon, and every game is 17 letters. Are you ready for that one? <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to me. I don't even want... Yeah, go ahead. You're going to give me some names, are you? <laughs> uh, Stalker said I couldn't write, but there's something. Anyway, Kevin, with the Spartans coming up in Tanamar, I think if we get some good ball out of, out of both teams at the beginning, because it's been the first of the game. Oh, great. Hey, Tony, baby, where is he? Tony's not here yet. When Tony comes back with a headset on, yeah, I'll fix it. <laughs> you know, he hasn't got a hope the rest of the game, don't you, our cameraman? <laughs> okay, let's get through those names again. Kevin, if you don't mind introducing both teams. Okay. And I'll sit back and listen. But uh, there's some classic baseball names in there. Roddy Wilson's son, Derek. Al Casey's son, John, I do believe. And... Uh, you know, you can go down through the names, and there's always going to be a Greenlaw or, or a Walker down there. Duncan Walker, number 10, will be on the court real quick, I think, for them. Before we get started, Ken, once again, you know, congratulations to the Lady Blackouts, their double-A team, come up with a big win in the game that uh, was just played before this one. Okay, after the introductions, I want to talk to Tony. I guess Tony's still hired by the city, and maybe he can look after me. But I don't think Tony can hear me because he'd nod his head if he could. <laughs> go ahead. We're all set to go for Tantramar Titans. The guard's going to be Derek Wilson. No, we're going to go. We're going to go with Tantramar. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be. Oh, sorry, Ted. that was Nat Garrell. Yeah. Wearing number six will be Chris Becker. 
Guy Guerrero wearing number 12, playing forward. You don't mind if I call him G a few times here. Now there's Chris Becker there. This guy's a good ball player. He's got a nice, nice jump shot. And number eight's going to be Tony Perry. He's as good as Mike Perry. We should have a show. Yeah. Now for the St. Stephen Spartans. Guard wearing number six, John Casey. Playing forward, number 14, Mike Scott. Also playing forward, wearing number 15, Wayne Hasty. Wearing number 13, Trevor Perry. And the other guard wearing number four, Derek Wilson. Nice crowd here tonight, folks, and I'll tell you, they're very appreciative of what they're seeing. Congratulations to Andre Champagne and the AA girls. Tony, Tony's gonna take me out for some pizza after, because I heard that, you know, where he didn't have, Tony, do you have to work tonight after the broadcast? Can we see that, Tony? Tony's not gonna talk to me for a while, I can see that. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have some b-ball here, Kevin. I'll tell you something, I, I do believe this could be one of the best games of the tournament. And I think it can top the FHS Blackcats game. Well, I think all the games, you know, Ken, we said it many times before, but all the games uh, so far have been of a high quality. We had a couple good ones today. Yeah, I thought we were fortunate to have that good ball game this afternoon. Uh, I thought the Can uh, Canterbury game was a slow, slow basketball game, but then all the rest of it opened up later on. Mike Scott, 14, Hasty 15, Perry, 13, Casey, 6, and Wilson. He's got ankle casts on both ankles, there's no question about that. Well, to Steve Chapman and to Donnie Walker, I wish you the best of luck, guys. You're two class guys around here, and it's good to see you here again. Rematch from last year, the double A. Kevin and the Cable sitting here, and it's gonna be controlled by Becker, and it's gonna come up into the front court immediately. And they're gonna run and gun. This is just what they did last year, rebounded by Scott, and it's gonna come back outside. That's Nat with the ball. We're gonna go Nat and Gee because he's got his brother up there as well. Becker way out, but boy, he can shoot Kevin. If he gets the ball, he's gonna show you some shots. They look like they're pretty evenly matched in size too, don't they? Yeah, they sure do. Woo. Nice jump shot by Tony Perry. Good ball movement there, Ken. They waited for the good shot to come open a short jumper for the hoop. 25 seconds and they got a hoop. Watch Wilson, boy out there. They're gonna play Wilson, they better be ready. Football and it's gonna go to uh, St. Stephen with a new fresh, 30 seconds. There's the screen, Wilson comes out high. He can pop from three point line in a hurry. Stolen and coming the other way by Finley. Nice move by Finley, but it's rebounded inside by Nat and he brings the ball back outside and Finley's got it. Got a little too far under the hoop on the drive there, Kenny tried to flip her back up. Yeah, I think he lost uh, total sight of where he was. Yeah. Good controlled offense. St. Stephen had a shot, haven't had a shot, and we played a minute. Turnaround jumper, I, I don't know if really Tatamar's had a shot other than the layup, because I think they've had three throws, Kev. Yeah, yeah, it could just be, you know, the guy's a little tight, adrenaline flowing pretty hard, uh, just coming in to begin the game here. Well, Perry Ware and eight and Finley 11 are the two guys that have got to help Becker in the offense, and I think Nat and, and Guy are gonna have to help them after they get the ball by, by making sure there's no fast break. Yeah. That's uh, Garou, of course. On the jab, and he traveled. They've, nice. got a, they've got a football reputation down there, second to none in the province as well, Kevin. St. Stephen trying to find an open man, and there's not much there. That's Trevor Perry, and we have a Perry in both teams, Trevor and Tony. Wilson on the drive, he just stopped, and nothing there. Scott and Hasty were waiting for the ball, they didn't get it. Excellent collapsing defense by Todd Jamar. Finley up into the front court, he's got Becker in. Becker is really being, he's being fronted right now by Hasty. Scotty outside, guarding very tightly. That's Kinley on the jab, trying to find an open man. Becker on the turn, he's got it. No, rebound to Wilson. Now there's a, there's a small guard, as I said, to play forward, Kevin. Yeah, he's got a good set of springs on him. Wilson trying to find a cutter, but not there. Johnny Casey's gonna control it. Watch out, baby, he can pop it. Wilson goes, it doesn't. Rebounded by Scotty in the inside, and we got a holding foul, and that's gonna go on number 12, and that's E. Garou. 
or Garrow. Did you find out how we say that? Garrow. Garrow, okay. Good ball movement by St. Stephen, Ken, but they just haven't got off uh, a real clean shot yet. The one jumper that they threw up was a bit of a brick. Stolen by Finley. We're going to come back the other way. Chris on the run. Back to Chris, and he goes board and board on that one. Boy, they're coming out smoking. They sure are. Titans have got an excellent defense going, Ken. Excellent communication on the floor. Wilson, he's trying to find Casey. He lobs it, and that's nowhere near it. Yep. Squirted out of his hand, threw it away. St. Stephen got a lot of composure, though. That's Nat uh, out top. Oh, good drive, but he lost control of it. But a lot of volleyball inside. They're out rebounding St. Stephen about 7-1 to one right now. Nice jumper off the rim and rebounded by Wilson. Who had, that's not a good foul. No, Becker. Becker reaching in. It's going to be interesting to see how deep both these teams are, isn't it? Yeah. The St. Stephen High played with the AAA KV Crusaders and uh, played them hard in their own tournament. So it's going to be interesting to see if that experience is going to help them. But we got a tough 2 1 2 zone, which is a 2 3. The boy is hasty, ever being guarded by Becker when he cuts through. Nice jump shot by Casey. He didn't go. Rebound, and we're going to come back the other way. And that's Nat. Nat on the bounce pass, and nice. Beautiful. Good. Not nice, beautiful move, yeah. and it's going to go to Tanner. Good change to the left hand. Went up for a good shot off the glass. Didn't Tony, drop for him. Tony Perry got a nice touch out there. Well, if you have to memorize anything tomorrow, I bet you tell him you're not interested. Uh, Perry is way outside, but he, he's got to be one of the bigger forwards if he's going to play with those guys. Finley pops it. Boy, they're hot. Now he's got a nice shooting touch. They got three guys who scored, too. I know, Finley's got two. Of course, Tanamar will go about eight deep, and I've only got five, five memorized. Well, on the jab, and we got a holding foul. It's going to go on uh, Nat Garrow. That's the third already. I got Becker, E, and Nat Garrow picking up fouls. They've only got two on the board. But I think they have three, don't they? Yes. Guy Garrow's come out, and uh, Mark Obey's in. Yeah, Obey, come on, did he? Yes. Sorry, I didn't get this out. Yeah, we're number nine. Okay, thank you. Oh, boy, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's good communication by the refs, because there was a foul there. And that one's... Is that one going... That's on Tony Perry. So they got four guys with a foul, and we got 16.42 left on a six-zip run. St. Stephen can come out and run too, but pretty interesting basketball. Mm -hmm. Bit of a lid on the hoop right now for St. Stephen, Ken. Oh yeah, she's tight right now. They've got nothing. Now they haven't even they haven't even come close to scoring on the layup or a no. jump shot. No, they don't seem to have a flow to their offense yet. Matt handling the ball, he passed it off, and they're going to play a little catch till Finley makes a jab. They're going baseline, not much there. They bring the ball back outside to Nat. Well, he's a good dribbler. He, he sure has got is. his head up. Finley on the dish, turnaround, jumper, no good. They're good shots, though, but Hasty Wayne took over that one. Yeah, he cleaned the board well. Wilson on a run, he's at the top of the key, bounce passes across. They're going to go inside to Hasty, he turns, pop, no good. Rebounded by Becker, and he's been at both ends, and these guys are gonna run, I'll tell you. Obi on the dish, Nat coming up into the front court, and not a good shot. Oh, nice play, Becker's gonna go, he doesn't get it, rebounded by Hasty. Between Hasty and Becker, is anybody, Wilson, is anybody else gonna rebound the main? Uh, it doesn't look that way. Wilson on the bounce, oh, what a fast paced ball game too. On the bounce pass to Hasty, he's got that one. I'm afraid they're letting see Steven play their game now, Kevin. Yeah. That's Chris Finley up into the front court. His brother Jeff is uh, on the bench right now. Becker trying to get a cut. He brings the ball back outside. Nat from 15, and he's got it. Not, no, that wasn't Nat. No, that, that was, was Obey. Mark Obey. Yeah. Nice shot from the line. Uh, Nat's at the screen. Good movement by uh, the Titans in their offense. He grew, uh, grew getting ready to come back on as well. On the jab. Boy, that power fake's working good. Hey, are they heating the twine up right now or not? That's Perry for two. 8-5, and I think this is what Tanamar wants, and I don't know if St. Stephen does. Tanamar just having some fun out there. They came and ran last year, and they, did, they couldn't buy a hoop for about eight minutes. But they're coming, they are prepared, and they are ready. They, they burnt the twine here yesterday in the warm-up. That's Chris Finley on the jab, trying to come inside Stoney Perry, and no good. Perry followed up, good hands. There's no foul on that one, baby. No, no, all ball. Trevor Perry knocked it out. Wilson, Woo. no good. 
Well, look at Pecan, see that's Scott, and we picked up a foul, now it's gonna go on Chris Finley. Well, they got five fouls and everybody's got one. They got six fouls and everybody's got one. They didn't put that other one up, Kevin. Oh, I've got five, I'm sorry. So we'll see if it changes. Have you got five as well uh, on that? Yeah, or? they just put it up. Okay. Chris Finley coming off and coming back on where number 12 is. Is Key with his brother, Nat. And uh, for St. Stephen, Duncan Walker, where number 10's yeah, in the game. I told game. you, you'd see Duncan Walker. Duncan Walker put on a show here yesterday, uh, going up over the rim, I'll tell you. I like to get a haircut like that, but every time I do that, it all falls out. Not a good pass. Trevor Perry tried it, we're coming the other way, and that's gonna be Nat, he's got it. Oh, no, that wasn't Nat, that was Obi. Gee. Nat Garrow started the play, Ken, very impressed with his play so far, defensively and handling uh, handling the offense when they get down uh, to run their plays. Right, that was key. I, I, I tell you, it's confusing when you get brothers out there and we get two sets. St. Stephen are down 11-5, and it's not an embarrassing situation yet, but it would be if they couldn't burn their offense any better than that. Boy, Walker gets back. You watch him, Duncan, not wearing number 10. He is quick. Well, they gave Becker. Becker had the shot, and he yeah. didn't take it. That's Nat. He didn't take it. They go inside. Good rejection. No foul on that, baby. Don't call foul when there isn't any. Wayne Hasty taking over on the defensive well, class. got two there, I'll tell you. Going to go for three. Going to be on the line. That's Derek's first, 13-41 left. This is going to be their sixth foul. I didn't get the number, did you? We'll get down the board. Uh, Tanamar going to take a timeout with a score of 10-7. That's Obi's first. Uh, I thought they had 11-7 up there, Kevin. 2, 4, 6, 8. 10. No, they haven't got a free throw yet, so that's a proper score. They had 11 up there a minute ago, but they cracked it. Kev, up to this stage, is this, is this the kind of basketball you and I like to watch or not? Yeah, they've been going up and down the floor, Ken, and you know, that's good. Uh, both teams have missed a few shots in close, and we seem to mention it every game. You know, there seems to be, uh, uh, you know, one, uh, one team or the other misses the odd one in close, and those are easy points that you have to make in an important game like this. Whew. Threw her off a little hard there. They tried that in the Fizz Ed Conference and made it seven underneath of the net, and I still hit the floor. Okay, that takes a lot of guts to go up and come down like that. You really do depend on your team, don't you? You bet. I like the run and gun show, Kevin, and I like it with my kids as well, but I like it. You can control a run and yes. gun. Yeah. I think St. Stephen has lost it. I think Trevor Perry is going to stop dishing off and maybe pop that 15 footer for a minute, don't you? Yeah. Well, they had a couple shots and they had a couple chances in close where they could have, uh, you know, there's been too many passes. Yes. Same with uh, uh, with the Titans, though, too. Well, the Titans had three bunnies and they passed off and, and uh, didn't get possession back. Now, Wilson's a good looking ball player, Ken. Uh, they're letting him get back in. He's had ankle injuries all year for two years and he still keeps bouncing back. But he's a tough cookie and you know that already. Yep. Well, that's Tony Perry and the other team holding on to the ball. We've got a sub coming back on for. Tanimer, boy, that Nat really dishes the ball off well, doesn't he? He sees the court very well, he Ken. He really does. Becker doesn't know. Becker doesn't know he can turn and pop that. Yep. Nat to Becker. He's going to pop. Oh, good move. Thought he shot. Oh, Duncan Walker. Duncan Walker. Yeah, good springs. I told you he's a good yeah. six, man. Yeah, he can play. Well, 10-8. I think Tanimer have got to get back into their offense. Oh, good move. Rejected, though, but hasty on the other side. 10-10. That's not what Tanimer wanted after no. the first seven minutes, I no. don't think. They needed a higher point spread. Mark Obey's giving us a good time out there. Yeah, he sure has. They're not giving him the ball, though. Nice looking jump shot, but around the rim and out again. And we're coming back the other way. See, Stevens on a 3-2. Wilson, he's got it. No, he didn't. Good boards inside. Good tip by Walker, and he's playing volleyball. Boys, he's a unit in there. Becker on the tip, and we're going. Oh, nice play by Nat. Oh, he missed the bunny. I think Steve's doing what I do right now, yeah. bringing him over here and tying him to the chair. Holy mackerel. L-O-D, lack of discipline. L-O-C, lack of control, but there's something missing right there. Again, you're seeing the same thing. Oh, stolen because nobody concentrated on it. John Casey just get in. I'll tell you, Kevin, I'm just looking around under the crowd. We got ourselves a pretty decent crowd yeah. for, the, for the evening we're in. Yeah, we sure do, Ken. Ken, I think uh, if you wanted to take a note here, just between the difference between uh, the game between FHS and Kennebecasis, uh, Kennebecasis, 
KB was the other night, the men's game, the yes, King of Crusaders, yes. Kenwood Cases Valley. Uh, the speed is much the same, the jumping ability is much the same, but rarely do they miss those shots in close. You get somebody like Richie Sullivan going down the lane, he's usually gonna make the, make the layup or end up on the free throw. Not to take anything away from Derek Wilson, who's playing a whale of a game so far, but he's missed uh, a couple times. He's gone down the lane, had the layup, and uh, it's rolled off, and they've come away with nothing. Uh, in a close game like that, you know, we keep saying, we keep harping on the same points, but those are the ones that you have to make. Do you feel if Wilson continues to do what he's doing and they keep Walker out there, he may start dishing off yes. and he stays cold? I think so, and that's, you know, there's something like that you can't, you know, I don't think you can do it, because you should do it, because the guy's in that close. I mean, we saw it down here at this end of the floor of the Titans with Becker. He got Twice in tight in row, on the turnaround, yeah, and all of a sudden he threw it back up to where nobody was. And, you know, those are, those are mistakes that shouldn't happen. And I mean, you know, I know, you know, as we said, it's a big floor, you know, new building for these kids to play in and that, but you've still got to do the things that, you've, that got you here. You can't change uh, change in the final game. That's when trouble starts. I think Tanamara wanted to come out and run, but I think they wanted a few more points on the board after almost eight minutes, Kevin. Yeah. And I think that's what you just described, is because they're not taking that quality shot that they've got to take. Yeah. Well, they got the ball. They're, they're down 12-10. That's correct, isn't it? 12-10? Yes. That's Guy Gill. Nice jump shot by Guy, but it didn't go. But Becker Good there. crash, nice good feed. Nice dish to Guy. And Duncan Walker picked up the foul. Do you realize that's St. Stephen's first foul? You know, uh, Ken, the ref, uh, he called it on Walker. I don't think it was Walker. I think it was number six. I thought Duncan was above him and had yeah. a good block. That's John Casey. However, uh, you know, neither here nor there. Kevin, we've never missed a call from here. You know that. No. And I think the viewers should know that, too. Yes, I think they're starting to realize that. <laughs> Well, Guy's got one out of two. Becker made the tip on that one. He made that one, but Finley didn't bite it. Lack of communication, yeah. Ken. Now, Casey got that because he was in the right position at yeah. the wrong time. Yeah. Well, 12-11, 11.54 left, and it's not a high-scoring game yet, but it will be, we think. But the thing is, it's a very, very uh, wide-open game, even at that score. That's going to go on Obey. That's on Obey, and he's, he's got two, and they're not the fouls you want a guy from no. the picking up. Again, Ken, we've only, you know, we're coming up on the 11-minute mark, uh, nine minutes of playing time, and you can tell just from the, what we've seen so far that these are uh, two very well-coached teams. Casey trying to inbounds the ball. He got it in his back to him. Watch out. He'll shoot it there in a while. Yeah, he looks like he had her loaded up oh, there. Oh, he for was three. loaded. And watch out for Wilson. They give him that step. He's got the quickest first step I've ever seen. Oh, nice jump shot, but it didn't go. Good play by Casey. I would have called that either backcourt or football, but I, I didn't see it. Brian was right there, so we, you go with the official, but we don't want to sound like we're offici officiating here, but it, that's what it looked like. We don't know if it was true. Hasty got slapped. Yeah, Becker, that's his second. Eleven sixteen left. I think you, you analyzed it properly, but... No matter what we do, this St. Stephen ball club's got to show us they can run an offense too. Yes, yes. Because you say nice things and bad things, but if it's not working, it's not working. No. Nice free throw right there by Hasty. Yeah. He's got five. But they've got four guys that have scored, but uh, Tanemar have got, got four, so it's pretty well even that way. But you know, Becker hasn't got a point yet. He's a guy that I said would wide yeah. wide open. And he's, he's had the opportunity to shoot Ken, oh, you know, a little turnaround down on the side of the can. He has to take those shots or try for a power step in the middle and uh, try to go for three. He should not be doing that. No. Good save by Perry. Sure was. Ball back outside to Finley, being guarded very closely by number 13, to, uh, Trevor Perry. They've got motion. They've got everything going for them except to the net. There's only 10 on the shot clock. Not a bad jump shot, though. Boy, I'll give that one to him. Yeah. Finley's back in the game for uh, for the Titans, and he had a few a uh, couple field goals early, or a few points early, and I think he's yeah, got he to get two, heated two up nice again. Yeah, two nice ones, and he missed a couple of bunnies, but he took he, he's taking some good shots there. There's how you throw the skip, but watch Wilson. Look at that rotation. You can see it from here. Yep. Nice pass. That's Nat. Nat's going to bring the ball back. That was a nice dish. How did he win there and not score in that one? See, Ken, that's you know that's the difference that we've talked about between the two levels of play. I think. Yeah. You're right, Casey on the jab. Ooh. Well, Becker lost his glasses on that one, I can tell you. I, 
I think Coach Chapman is, is coaching the way I'd coach right now. Sure. I think he would too, Kevin. Yeah, he's got to do it, I think, to keep his team in the game. Boy, I'll tell you, Casey's got quick hands. Nice dash. Oh, jeez, they're missing the bunnies. That's another, on the one. That's another one, Ken. This is, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but I think this may come back to haunt them. Well, Nat and Gee are playing as good a guard out there as we've seen in years. Duck and Walker, pop, no good. Duck and Walker, pop, and he's got it. First two for him, Ken. Got some big rebounds. He can back oh. on a fast break lunch. 16-11, Tanamar will get the run again. Nice jump shot by Perry, but it was out of control. Rebound by Chris Finley, he's got it. Yep. Six for him, and I think he's gonna have to be the one to... He's gotta heat up in there, doesn't he? Yeah, get? he's gonna have to keep me in until some of these other guys start dropping some shots. Boy, Becker's fighting for oxygen out there right now. Casey on the bounce, and it didn't go. Good steal by Garrell. 16-13, oh. but it was stolen back by Wolfson. Yeah. And you're gonna get Scott coming back on as well, so I'm sure Duncan Walker's gonna come out or perhaps he'll, he'll give another big postman a chance, yeah, maybe Hasty. Maybe Hasty get it. Because right now they're up with those guys. Becker, out of control. Oh. That's, a, that's a shot that he would not, if he watches it, be happy with. No, jump sideways, Ken, and uh, the, the glass saved him. He went right and the ball went left. Yeah. Yeah, the glass saved him. Oh, football, that's, uh, of course, Tanamar, and you say football, I better be careful, there may be a, <laughs> a linebacker drill out there. Oh, he's taking off Casey. Opie coming back on for Tanamar. Yeah, bringing Becker off for a blow. You're right, Ken. He's, uh, he looks like he's fighting for some air. Well, anytime I heard 23, it was a 2 3 zone. And that's what we got, eh? Yeah. Nice jump shot. Boy, they're hot. Bottom of the well. And they're shooting under pressure. Yeah. That was Trevor Perry. That was bottom of the well. Good form on that, Ken. You know, after 24 hours of basketball, I could go again tomorrow, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. Long jumper, it didn't go, and the reason it didn't go is it was a little bit flat, but a nice shot out there by Obe. Good looking ball player. This Wilton is the cream of the crop. Well, right? he keeps the pressure on him, Ken, and he feeds very well. And a nice two-hander by Scott. That's his first two, they get six on the board. Coming up into the front court again is Nat, and he is a good one. I like to see him and Wilton on the same team. Oh yeah. Holy mackerel, would it be fun? That's Gee, he passed the ball, skip pass, and it didn't go. Good position, Nack is up with it, pop. His first two. 22-17, that's a lot of points considering it's been out of control for three or four minutes. Yeah. Look at this, long jumper, no good, and it's rebounded by Nat. I like this, watch this, folks. He's quick. This is gonna be good. Oh, good move. Double. Good move dribble. Duncan Walker, though, uh, excellent defensive play. Waited yeah. for him to make his move and just jumped straight up. Excellent vertical. Excellent, excellent first half. Two ball clubs, though. They've earned it. Now, there's a shot right there that yeah. I honestly feel should be taken. Perry had it, and he didn't, he didn't. I don't know whether he's trying to control the offense with the coach or not. But the bottom line is Finley made it. That's Chris. He's got eight, so I guess that's the bottom line, Kevin, as the coach is running it the way he wants it. Well, we coached really well last night, didn't we? Yeah, but I think, I still I agree with you, Ken. I think Tony Perry should be taking those shots. What a block. It done, they got it at the other end. What a block by Tony Perry. I think Wilson just got a little lazy when he got close to the hoop there. And, uh, excellent defensive play, though. Well, the leaping ability of the kids at this age level is unbelievable. Good pass the other way. Scotty's yeah. got that one. No, that was hasty. Hasty's playing well underneath. That one's gonna go against Mike Scott, reaching in over the top. Lots, lots and lots of fouls again. With oh yeah. And the bonus situation for Tanmar, they're gonna be really careful. St. Stephen definitely are one of the better free throw shooting teams we've seen in this, in this tournament. Gee Garrow's come out, Becker's back in the game. I wouldn't leave Gee off very long. No. Okay? He's gonna run with one guard, I would say, right now, or maybe make Chris Finley come out and handle it. There's Chris on the left, way outside is Becker, and they don't want him there, they'll have to get motion. Yep. That's Nat. Nat Perry. What am I missing on that? I don't know, Ken. To me, it looked like he just caught the ball and planted both his feet down there. Uh, I don't know. Inside, Hasty's gonna go up. No, that was Scott. No good. Rebounded by Duncan Walker, but on the tip. And Nat Garrell, he's got a, quite a set of wheels on him, Ken. 
he's as good a ball player as I've seen. That's going to go against Scott. Yeah, that's going to be his second. Well, 24-19, if our coach at Tanimar was only down five or six at the half, and I get to play it, I'd be quite happy. The Aiken Center looks empty with that camera shot, folks, but it isn't. They've got a good five, 600 fans here. Because in the back part of us, there's a, a tremendous crowd as well. Remember, it's that day of the snowstorm on Saturday, the 25th of February. Backed up on that. If he backs up on this free throw, he's yeah, going to have to do it. That's what killed him, Ken. Let's see what happens on this one. Put her in the well. Yeah. 24-20, 6.37 left. Good one, folks. Tanamar in the red and white. St. Stephen in the green away. St. Stephen are definitely going back to the one. Titans. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, Donnie made a sub as well. Uh, Timmy Connick's out there right now, and I think that's his name, isn't it, Connick? Yeah, we're in yeah. number seven. Yeah. Oh, good play by Becker. Perry goes up, but he can't shoot from that side, can no. he? No. Like, I'm still trying to figure out is he hitting the glass or something else? Oh, Duncan Walker was open. They didn't get him, and we got a foul right there, and it's going to go against Walker. But that's his second, isn't it? Yep. Well, that's only their fourth, though, 613 left. But I'm impressed Tanamar has gone five and a half minutes without picking up that yep. next foul to put uh, St. Stephen in the bonus. That's Casey. He's going to be chasing right now. Boy, Nat reads that well, doesn't he? He sure does. He's an uh, excellent point guard. Obi on the dish. Back outside. Finney made the pass to Becker, and that's his first two, and that could open him up. Second two, sorry, but he doesn't belong where he is right there. No. It's okay. I went to the other line, too. Must be the day. Getting lots of help from you, boy. I appreciate that. Believe me. And you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know you do. Not much motion right now. They've got to bring the ball back out, and that's not what they want. Duncan Walker can shoot that shot all day. They worked on that yesterday. Sure. But he's up a long ways. you, you got to foul a kid and he's up that way. Well, that see, far. the good thing there, too, is, Ken, is when he goes up, he gets those arms extended, and he's just got the little flick of the wrist at the top. Yeah, but then you come back with Perry the other way. I'll tell you, you can take the American High School basketball and say it's good basketball. This is good, too. Perry on the steal, and he's got the hoop. You know, that could turn it right around. He's got six so far in the yes, half. Yes, that's what... Trevor Perry picked up his first, and I don't know. Coming back on to be hasty. We forgot to ask our cameraman, Tony, who he thinks he's going to win. I'll see if he can nod for me later, whether it's going to be green or white. Green or white. Going to win. Green or white. Okay, baby. You're on, because I'm going the other way. Got a violation uh, by Hasty there, Ken. They're going to shoot it again. You know, the thing that impressed me with these camera people that are here, the volunteers, there's a possibility Tony could be called out to work tonight. We don't know that, but, but because of his job description, he could be. And you got a lot of guys volunteering from the high schools and junior highs. And folks, we appreciate it. Tony, I mean it. I can see why you're a volunteer of the year, buddy. Never heard a complaint from him from all the time he's been here. And he's been here all day with me. And, and Kev, that makes it a lot easier for oh, us, yeah. boy. Oh, yeah. Duck and Walker got, was deflected. I couldn't make that call right there, Kev. I no. couldn't see who touched last. No, the only thing I'm going to say about that that whole play, Ken uh, Becker should not be shooting the ball from that range. But he can't rebound. Well, 26-26, but St. Stephen, oh. Double dribble. Uh, now he's not coming back on defense. Good feed by Garrow to Becker. He can shoot that one anytime he wants. Yep. Casey got the boards. Boy, they got some fun athletes here, I think. They sure do. In the front court again. They can't find much though. Connick has, has given us some quality time though. He's got some other kids in some legs. Boy, did Duncan Walker ever play well since he's come out. And he hasn't taken a bad shot since he's been out there. Hasty. Yeah. Good move underneath. Eight for Hasty. I've got him for 10. I had him for oh, two free be. throws could as well. So I, I'll check the point total, Kevin. I, I don't mean to interrupt you on that, but I had him down for that. And I looked at yours. We'll check the point total later and find out. But no matter what he's got, he and Scott have played well out there. But Becker's making the 14-footers and missing the bunnies. And I don't know whether that's lack of concentration or wondering if old Duncan Walker yeah, is coming up from the rear, to... baby. Yep. On the jab, over to Casey. There he slide the ball. You know, they're doing this without Wilson out there, too. Yeah. Oh, good pass inside. Hasty on the dish, and look at this. Whew, should have been. 
Double. Yeah. Connick didn't uh, find the handle on that one, but that was a nice pass by Casey. Matt's played well, though, hasn't he? Oh, he sure has. I I'm really impressed with him. Cross to Becker. Chris Finley on the jab. Matt, he's going up and he traveled. No, he got a foul. That foul's going to go on number 13. That's Perry. That's his second in the camp. Yep. St. Stephen's six, so they still got one to get. Derek Wilson coming in the game. Connick's coming off. Yeah. Well, 332 left, 28-26. If they can get a three-point play here, like we said even with five, it should be a good second half. Oh, yeah. But I don't know how it's going to top this half other than a little bit more control. On, uh, that's that's been, uh, that's been the noticeable point, Ken. Yes, yes. Chris Finley to Becker, and there's where he's got to shoot, boys. But he doesn't like that hand in his face. I'm starting to realize yeah. that now. Wilson, oh, good pass. Looked like it hit a foot. Yeah. Chris Finley, front court. Chris brings the ball back out the net. They call them Nat and Gee, so you people in Sackville, if you're watching the tape, will know who they are. Because we just say their last names, it's not going to be fair to the kids. Oh, gee, nice shot. Could have been a foul on Chris Finley. He was careful. Tanamar still haven't allowed a one-on-one, -on -one, and it's uh, 12 minutes and 17 seconds at this stage. That's right. That shows you good discipline on the defense and a good zone as well, though. Boy, did Becker ever slide to take Walker on that one. Did you notice that, or did you get a chance, Kevin? Oh, no. he just rolled. Couldn't see him down in the back. Oh, man, Walker went through him, and he just rolled right off his body. Cut him right off. I'll try to work on that drill next week. To the sick and shut-ins on behalf of Kevin Robinson and me, we really hope you're enjoying it. And we read that, Kevin, don't we? Oh, yeah, it's been a great tournament. Look at Walker, Skywalker. <laughs> Wasn't there a Skywalker Holy in the movie somewhere? Holy smokes, that's going to go against Hasty. Yeah, and that's not a good foul for Hasty, even though it's only his first in the Team 7. I was just waiting for Walker just to jam her off the top of the rim there, just turn those wrists over and uh, put it down. Well, I'll tell you, if Gordy LaBelle and Dave uh, Sibley ever need someone to clean the glass without a ladder, I'd use him. Because he definitely was up over the square. Oh, yeah. Matt's going to control the offense. Still 28-26. Rick Stocker's going to be on at halftime with Claire Benton and Gordy LaBelle. That should be interesting. On the bounce, they bring it back outside to Chris Finley. And he, boy, I'll tell you, Perry's playing him on D. D to Mark Obey. Nice shot. Yeah. Mark Obey is a good seventh man. He has a bit, well, sixth, actually. They went to another kid, but not too long, so. No, and he's come off. He's given him good quality time, Ken, and popped a couple of hoops he's in. Popped, he's popped two good baskets for him to bring him back. And they're doing this with Becker on the bench. Wilson, Woo. nice shot. That was around and out. Perry couldn't control it. Wilson's all over the court, isn't he? Good Can you pivot. imagine he's playing on two bad ankles? Can you imagine? Nice jump shot. Give that one to Perry. He's got, he's got a quiet seven, Kevin. Wayne Hasty has either got eight or ten, but either way, he's the high point man for them. Chris Finley's got eight. I still think Becker's going to explode in the second half, and I, I think you do too, don't you? Yeah, I think Obey he has to. Again. Oh, good boards inside. 30 to 28. Spartans are up. Wilson on a run. He's going to go bounce pass to Hasty, and he's got that. No, yeah. That's tough in those rims. You go, no, yeah, no. Yeah, bounced around a bit, but it went down for him. Boy, the half's gone quick, eh? Okay, so we'll be Claire Benton at halftime, and Rick will be right down, ready to go with that, and we'll move Tony down the camera. Good cut, Matt, oh, jeez, what a move! Of course, what a move wasn't finished. Right, isn't that the bottom line yeah. on that one? Oh, jeez, I hope his ankle's all right. Yeah, that... got him with a travel. I think he might have got him with a hand. Yeah. Ryan Whitfield, Seward Nielsen refereeing, and it's going back to St. Stephen, and it's now going to the stage that the game started at, out of control. Yeah, yeah. They've been going at, uh, you know, they've been going at quite a pitch, Ken, the whole time, but they, they are out of control. Okay, with uh, 31 seconds, I think that might three, be the learning. Three, three. Don't you? I mean, the basket was there by Perry, but I thought that might have been a little too soon. Yeah, lots of time. Uh, the Titans can come down and... Uh, you know, play for a shot. Kevin Wilson's got a sore right wrist, I think, when he fell. He's just starting to get the circulation back now. The 35-28, if I were Tanner and I didn't score here, I'd be a little worried. Yep. They gotta stay away from the foul, and they gotta stay away from the three-point play, so I guess they gotta play good defense and maybe only allow a basket at the most. 
Well, they've got five seconds. They gotta go up with it soon. Finley bites, no good. Rebounded inside, and that's gonna be the score at the half, 35-28. What do you think, big guy? I think overall, uh, a good half of basketball, Ken. However, uh, the play's been a bit scrambling. I think that's one thing that both coaches are gonna talk about. I think uh, the Titans have shown that they can play with St. Stephen when they get some control. Uh, when, when they're in control of their offense and they have time to set their defense, they've been playing well. But when it gets into a running contest, as we've seen, the ball gets knocked around every now and then, and the play's been a little scrambly. I think that, that's the key to the whole thing, Kevin, is making sure his kids realize that even though they're down seven, it's, it's not a hard seven. But okay, we're ready for Rick. Okay, Uncle Rick, go get him. Okay, we have with us at halftime uh, the boys game, Tanchmar and St. Stephen, Claire Metton, coach of the Red Bloomers. Claire, when you come to a tournament like this as a coach of the Red Bloomers, what do you uh, look for as far as the, the girls' teams are concerned? Well, definitely, uh, Rick, it, it, this is probably one of the easiest recruiting tools that we have here at UNB. Just the fact that we have them come into our facility and, and look at what we have to offer here at UNB, uh, that, that's certainly one of the first things that we try and show them. But what, in response, I guess what I look for is uh, being in our situation, I can look for very specific types of athletes. Uh, we have uh, a very quick, aggressive team. So I'm looking for definitely some size. We need some size. I'm looking for some shooters. So you always have to send me to put the ball right. in the hoop. And uh, I, I'm looking at kids that I think have potential to be, you know, good basketball players. And without a doubt, you know, some kids in that Ferguson High team. And I, I really like Tara McIntyre from the St. John High team. I was really quite right. impressed with her. Right. So without really mentioning more names, you know, those are probably specifics that I look right. for. So when, when uh, as a member of the chairman, not as a chairman, but as a member of the, the committee, um, when you, when you uh, are involved here, UNB is a major sponsor yes. of the tournament here. Yes. So as a major sponsor, are you a representative of, of UNB or are you uh, a member of the committee because you love basketball and you want to uh, be at, at, you know, do that type of thing? Oh, I, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I didn't say both. Because I can kill, you know, two, two birds, birds with one stone. stone. Right. I, I dearly would love to be involved. I want to be involved because of basketball. That's probably my first reason. But at the same time, as a representative for UNB and, and, and to be, Right here, sitting right here right. on site, have people meet me, uh, see me, and, and be with me. Instead of, you know, it's a little different when I'm up there in the stands because I don't get that opportunity. But when I'm on the floor and they have to come through me for practices, and, and uh, you know, that's really, like I said, killing two birds with one yeah. stone. Familiarity is a, oh, a critical thing. Sure it does. Well, let's talk about boys basketball. What do you think of this ball game right here? Oh, this is one we certainly need it. You know, our, our, our first games uh, this afternoon were, you know, Maybe not quite as exciting as, and maybe it was. We set the trend with the the overtime game with the AAA boys, right. and uh, these could be a hard act to follow. But yeah. uh, this is exciting. It's good basketball. It's up and down and the whole thing. So this is uh, certainly something that we need. Yeah. Notice uh, a swing at the end, uh, which is if you're a Tanchmar uh, player and coach uh, Steve Chapman, you don't, certainly in the last couple of minutes you don't want to go down from uh, being up two points or, or close yes. to a seven point swing. Well, I think it was 114 left to go in the half and they were only down two and now yeah. it's here they are down uh, seven. Seven points. So uh, that's a big, big swing. I right. think the guys just thought that, you know, there's a minute left, we'll just yeah. kind of coast in. And then t and, and uh, St. Stephen made a big three there that, that uh, pulled them ahead. So right. that's, a, that's an advantage. Shooting seems to be the uh, the key at this particular point in time. Tanchmar just aren't quite on the shot. Garo is, you know, he, his shooting technique leaves the ball coming at the basket flat, and as they've, a result, they've, uh, they've missed, missed some, a few. Yeah, and they missed yeah. some easy ones easy inside. Ones. Right. And I think uh, in, they're lucky to be, uh, you know, this kind of a game because I know St. Stephen's made some mistakes on the other end of the court. Yeah. They have made some bad passes. So, yeah. uh, you know, but you can't help but have that kind of anxiety. That it's a big game, and uh, it's a pressure situation, and they're trying to play play it really intense and upbeat, and at the same time, they they have very high anxiety. So they're they're now if they can just kind of get that yeah. first half under their belt and then go forward, yeah. they'll be all right. As I say, the teams have felt each other out, and now they're going to have to make some adjustments, especially uh, Tantamar in the second half to uh, bring the ball game back. Well, and uh, I think a lot of the pressure was on uh, St. Stephen. It seemed to be everybody yeah. talking the stands that they shouldn't have much problem, and it's easy coming in as the underdog. Yeah, right. You know, you haven't got any pressure on you, and uh, you know, uh, Steve was very positive on Monday when he was here for our press conference. He said, you know, we're going to be there, right. and uh, you know, it, it, although it was a, a rematch of last year's, they were doing a good job. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Claire. Thank you, Rick. We'll be right back with the second half.
Okay, Kevin, I think we should try to put some stats on the board here with the score 35-28 in favor of the Spartans. Go ahead. Okay, for St. Stephen, Derek Wilson in the first half had five. John Casey had two. Trevor Perry had 10. Mike Scott with two. Wayne Hasty with 12. And Duncan Walker with four. For the Tantramar Titans, Nat Garrow had three. Christopher Becker had four. Tony Perry had six. Chris Finley had eight. Guy Garrow had three. And Mark Obe had four. Uh, nobody really appears to be in any foul trouble. We've got a few on each side that have uh, two and a yeah, couple Obey's more guys that have one. Are you surprised at the small total of Becker, or is it just me? No, I am. I thought for sure they'd be trying to, he, I thought their offense would revol revolve around him somewhere uh, in one of the post positions. Yeah. Wow, good steal by Casey, and that's a real bad start for Tanamar. They come down at the first five shots, Kevin, in this ball game, and we're saying St. Stephen that we're out of their offense, but there it goes again. The lack of concentration. I told my kids the other day, we did that seven consecutive times, and one of the coaches helped me. He said, why don't you call a timeout? I said, hey, they know what they're doing. Now they got to correct it. Just call a timeout, so you're going to tell them what they're doing again. There's a foul on Becker. Boy, was Walker there for that one? Yeah, and that's Becker's third, so... Uh... You know, he's one to watch. Yeah. You don't like to see that lob pass too much at this level of ball, Ken, but Duncan th Walker may be the one guy that could he pull it off. He may be the guy we can take. I think that'll be Mark Obey coming right back on, I think. I think that's a good move to uh, get Chris uh, a little yeah. bit of a rest. Walker on the jab. Boy, he's got a nice touch. He sure does. And I told you he'd be the first or second man off the bench and he wouldn't go off again. Remember, this team played FHS AAA Black Cats when we lost 84-81 in the FHS Gymnasium. And you and I both know that can be a very noisy place. Oh, if yeah. Was, if it was to be. But Becker's got to be careful. He's got three, and uh, you know, even on offense, he can pick it up. Oh, Chris Finley got it right in the eye. Right in the eye. Well, Steve's going to take a timeout right now, and it's 37-28, and that's quality. But they're scoring it easy inside right now. So Hasty's got 14, and oh no, I guess we got a we got a real bad eye injury right here as well, and that's uh, Hasty. That's Hasty again. What number have you got? <laughs> yeah, Jim drawn. No wonder it couldn't win. Jim Rell drawn. Play baseball with the same guy getting even. Hey, check that card. It looks like it's, if Rick Stalker wins this one, we're done. What do you think, Kevin? A lot of good friends, haven't they? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, three for a dollar. You know what I paid? I got two for a buck. <laughs> I just, I bet you won't even read the right number. That's why I lost. <laughs> Sorry for the pause. Whipple read the number wrong again. There's no question about that. Brian Whitfield thinks he won. <laughs> 8309. Claire Mitten has one. Fix. It's a fix. It's a fix. Stalker, you interviewed her. Yeah, sure. Give her a check, Rick. I'll sign it. <laughs> Sorry, folks, but it's kind of humorous here. You watch these guys do what they're doing. <laughs> you didn't buy a ticket either, did you? No. <laughs> you know, have you noticed all the prize winners haven't had to walk very far? That's right. <laughs> That'll be donated to UNB Athletic Fund, I'm sure, <laughs> after basic deductions. Good move by Perry, and it's good. Tantramar needed the hoop. Kevin, I was just going to say, if they hadn't got the hoop there and they lost it, they're in trouble. And they're pressing without Becker, because he's the only guy with three fouls. Nice double team, but Walker didn't step for the ball. Uh, I think Duncan had a hard time catching it after yeah. he got clunked there, too. Yeah, and that girl, uh, you know, coming up with the big pressure, too. 39-30, Black Cats are, er, Black Cats, here we go. St. Stephen are up by nine, they dished off inside and Scott couldn't handle it, not Hasty. Scott's not out there right now, is he? No. He and Hasty are about the same size and play the same way too. Perry's got to shoot though if he's there. You yes, can't hold does. on the ball all the time. Becker's still there, I thought he subbed for him. Didn't he sub for him? I don't think he came into the game. He had Obey ready, but I guess he's gonna play him with three. It's not as dangerous as it sounds, though. We saw some kids Friday night play with it. Here oh, comes yeah. Mark. He's ready to come out now. That's going to be a foul. The question is, who won? That's going on. Going on hasty. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, we got uh, three guys with two. Mark Obey coming on and Chris Becker coming on. How many liters of Pepsi Cola can we consume? Watch us. No, I think he's going to bring Finley off. Finley hurt his eye. 
Rick Cotter's young fella doing the floor, They're doing a good job. Boys, it's nice to see the little kids here, the ball boys and ball girls from oh, Albert yeah. Street. Drinking their Pepsi Cola like we are. It's nice to see them over there. <laughs> we hope the kids are having a good time. Nat, skip to Obey. They go inside, and nice jump shot by Perry. Hasty had the boards, but he couldn't hold on to it. Nat Garrell uh, Nat. took it right out of Hasty's hands. Hasty's going to pick up his first, I think, yeah. I think that went on John Casey. Yeah, that's his first. No, it's his second. I did. That was the foul that we missed and I missed in the first half. Again, St. Stephen have worked very hard on their defense, and they have 39 points on their offense, I think because of it, Kevin, because of the tough defense. And that's living proof right there because Becker was shooting the ball before he got it. You know, if you go to sleep tonight and think the headsets are still on, I will not uh, <laughs> be surprised. Christopher Becker still has to get more involved uh, for the Titans, Ken. Well, because they're not getting too much into the middle. Not so much on defense as offense. Boy, that was a long ways up, wasn't it? Sure was. Well, the Spartans are coming back the other way. Wilson, who, who really hasn't dominated, he's only got five. He usually scores about 20 to 25. But that may be because the Titans are playing a real tough zone, and, and they haven't let him drive since he made those or missed those first two bunnies. That's, that's right. Walker, Paul's going to yeah. go on Perry. Yeah, that's Perry. He had his hand up long before they made the call. Well, 17-32 left, 39-30. Uh, I still think this game can hit the 70s because I think both teams are going to have to go on a fresh run to, to open it up. And I, if I were St. Stephen, I, I wouldn't be happy with only a nine-point deficit no. at this pace, would you? No. I think they should outlaw the zone <laughs> soon. Walker. Nobody's going to block that shot, Ken. He's tough in there, isn't he? And he's got a good eight. He's got a good eight. To me, that's the type of shot that Becker should be taking, or the, the type of position well, he should Becker's be moving for. Well, Becker's been there for. to get it, but see, he's way out high now. And Nat took that one, but nobody there. He got that, and he goes up, and he's got it. That was key, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And they're going to go the length of the floor now, Ken. Tantramars, uh, they got their press right up. Well, I actually believe that's what they've got to do, and even though there's 16.50 left, I, I believe that's what they've got to do. Nice play by Wilson. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah, and he knew it. He let everybody know it. <laughs> Good jump shot. Perry couldn't buy it. He followed it up, and that shouldn't be happening with the height that they no, have. Out there. No, it shouldn't. That's Trevor's first in this half, but he had uh, he had but 11 points in the first half, didn't he? Or, or approximately. 10. 10. But he's uh, he's played well. So that's a that's a good 10. You're right. He's played well. Tanemar down 11, and this is what happened to happened to in the single A is, is all of a sudden if it just the double A, if it just double A girls get up by 10, then all yeah. of a sudden it was 13. But I'm sure if you listen to the broadcast, you'll, you'll pick that up very quickly. I don't know who that's on, but looks like it's going on Perry. That's his third. Coming on to be Chris Finley, who's got one. That was on Becker's Becker. fourth. Gee, that's uh, his fourth, he's yeah. coming off. Perry tried to take it for him. You gotta appreciate that. Yeah. It's his fourth. I just don't think they can they can have go without Becker. No. I really don't, because when he went off, St. Stephen really picked up the had the horses going, eh? Yep. This kid's a good ball player. Yeah, he sure is. I did it again, didn't I, Kev? Thought that was gonna drop for me. A good rotation on that shot. Well, both of them off the irons and then out, but Hasty underneath. Hasty just Hasty just doing what he wants out there right now. And and he's doing it very easily. And this game's gonna be a blowout, my friend, in the next three minutes if they can't do anything with That's it. That's right. Tatchamar needs some points. The big thing right now is we're getting an illegal screen. That's going on Perry. That's his third, Ken. Boy, do I know how Steve feels right now. I sure do. And there's not much you can do if St. Stephen will not allow you know, any change. But, Kevin, I, I believe Tanamar's pressure is hurting them right now. Am I wrong on that? Or? No, you're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, they've missed a few floor now to get back in it. They, uh, I think what they're going to have to do a couple times down the floor is slow it down a bit just to get back into a flow to try to, try to 
uh, uh, loosen up the St. Stephen defense. How slow do they have to go? 20 seconds type thing? Well, still I think, 50, yeah, 50 yeah I was just gonna say that. I mean, there's, you know, just under 16 minutes. I mean, I think for a couple of trips down the floor, they can afford even to go to 30 seconds as long as they come up with points. And points not off a scrambly play. Uh, you know, points off a, you know, a set run play or a set run sequence from their offense. When's the last time that Tatamar have gone down and scored on a layup? I'm not oh, well, I can't remember. I can't, honestly. You know. I mean, they got they got a bunny in there, sort of a bunny on a tip when the ball came back to them. But I was absolutely amazed that Becker, even after he passed, he still stayed outside. And Chris Finley, when he was out there, who started off the game really hot, him and, him and uh, Tony Perry, all of a sudden, boom, they're inconspicuous because they're passing the ball off. Hey, Ken, that's got to be a frustrating thing. And, uh, you know, we mentioned the point, too, when the Fredericton, uh, the AAA Black Cats were playing. A guy like Duff Adams, you know, yeah, he does have the good touch outside. But, geez, with his uh, his size and strength, he should be crashing the boards. This is the case with Becker. And uh, the other night when they played KV, uh, I can't remember the fellow's name for KV, their center. Joey Walker? Joey Walker. You know, big and strong guy. He's got to go in and crash and take yeah. over. And Joey Walker showed it in, uh, in the middle of the game. He just didn't get the ball. Yeah. I mean, Duncan now, Walker's getting it. Joey should have got it. That's right. But now that's a classic. You know, that's what a big man should do. The fact that he missed the ball, that missed the shot, doesn't matter. But again, they're up into the front court very quickly, but they're just not waiting for rebound. No. He took a bad shot, and I think he'd be the first one to tell you yeah, that. Yeah, I, I know Nat's going to tell him after the game. Well, I know Coach Chapman's up, and he's trying to get him just to settle down a bit on offense. You know, I think he realizes that they're out of a flow. Well, they just had another minute to tick off the clock without a basket. St. Stephen come down, and, you know, whether they score or not, they're holding on to the ball. And as long as they've got the ball, you can't sure. score. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to sleep as good tonight as I oh, am? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Talk Talk will be real interesting tomorrow. I'm glad I got some good guests. It's going to be a push off there. That's going to go on Casey. Casey. He, I think what happened to Casey on that, that's his third. He didn't get any help by someone hauling right or left sure. on the screen. Yeah, yeah. It was a good screen by Obey, but, uh, you know, when he got bumped there, he pushed off a bit, and the ref got him. And then you mentioned a good point, though, Ken. It's got to be communication. You have to talk to everybody out there to let them know what's going on. Well, St. Stephen haven't gone real deep either, you know, on the bench. No. And it looks like perhaps both these teams could get them. I get themselves in trouble if uh, they get foul trouble. I must be missing the call there, Ken. I I thought he put the ball down and then went back up. I I, I didn't see it the way it was called. They're working the ball very nicely, but they're not getting much out of it until they go in there like that. Because Hasty, Hasty, my friend, he knows what to do with the ball, B ball, and he gets he's as good a three foot shot player as I've seen. Oh, nice move. That wasn't a travel. Matt is putting on a clinic driver, but he's looking to dish off. Yeah. He did that twice in the first half we could have passed. I think he maybe have to be one of the guys that's going to have to try to open it up uh, instead of, as you say, dishing off, going with the shot. Yeah. Boy, this Wilson's a quarterback, though, isn't he? Yeah, he plays the position well. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> block by Finley. But Walker goes again, and that foul's going to go on Finley. It's only a second. It's only Chris's second, though. That's okay, but the bottom line on that part of it is Duncan Walker's going to the line. Just looking at the crowd reaction as we're getting ready. Most of St. Stephen fans are on their hands right now. 11, 11. Because uh, it's just a very easy 14-point lead. Yep. Gee, Walker's got nine. He didn't play the first eight minutes. He's rebounding well, too. Look at that camera work. Woo. Eat your heart out, CBS. Oh, yeah. Good way to finish off the year with communication like this. Yep. That's Nat into the front court, but again, he's stopping his dribble yeah. so far out, there's yeah. nobody there to help him. Chris yeah. Finley on that side cannot hurt you that far out. Back to Mark Obey, who I think is the best sub for Tanamar right now. I think he may be the only sub to come on, isn't he? Yes. Oh, good move by Chris Finley, but that's gonna be a foul, and that's going on to, uh, Trevor Perry, and that's his third. We got a lot of guys with three out there right now. Sure Chris do. Becker's sitting down with three. Tony Perry's got three. Trevor Perry's got three for St. Stephen, and John Casey's got three, but I think if Trevor and John come off, it won't be as crucial as it will be if Chris Becker doesn't yes. get out there soon to play. But you know, Tannemeyer have gone two and a half minutes now and only scored one basket. They gotta get the ball over the rim to score. Oh boy, he get pushed there. Sure did. That's going on Trevor, and that'll be his fourth. No, he, called it, he called it on Wilson, I think. Well, I'll tell you something. Yeah, he got away with one there. That's Trevor Perry got away with one there. That's a tough call. Trevor Perry definitely got his licks in on that one. 
I thought it was Trevor, didn't you? Yes. But the foul was called. That's that's the big thing about that. Well, Tanemeyer again don't have much offense. Outside they're they're moving the ball, but that's where St. Stephen want them. 13 on the shot clock. But we got a violation. Tanemeyer don't seem to have their heads in gear. Uh, no. And Steve Chapman is the kind of coach that's had them ready. They're just not out there playing the way he's coached them. Steve's done a really nice job with this ball club. But they're playing. They're playing a powerhouse. Is that three? No, that was uh, Trevor Perry. Oh, well, I thought he gave him three points oh. on that. He put him up. Yeah, they went from 49 to 52. I didn't think he was out that far. Look at that drive. That's a charge. That's on Nat, but that's only his second. I tells you there's a little bit of lack of discipline out there. Scott getting ready to come on, and I think Hasty will come for a blow. Yep. I don't think there's much left for Tanamar if they don't do something on this time out, Kevin. Yes, I think uh, now, uh, even though there is just over 13 minutes to play, they have to score the next time they go down the floor, but I think they are going to have to start to go with the pressure again, and we know when they've done that before, that's hurt them a bit. But yeah, their pressure really has been weaker than their zone. Yeah, they have to get the ball back uh, on a, you know, a number of times, and 13 minutes is ample time to do it, but they've got to start hacking away at that lead. But how can they get the ball back right now? Because St. Stephen has got Wilson out there, who, as far as I'm concerned, just does what he wants to. And Duncan Walker inside. Yeah, um, then you got to go to Trevor Perry, who's starting to bomb from the, from the parking lot. And then you get guys like Hasty and Scott who are complimenting each other, subbing each other all the time. Sure. And, and you know, with a guy like Duncan Walker in there, you've got to be thinking if you're a guy with three fouls, that, uh, do I go at him or do I let him shoot and rebound it if there's a miss? I think their attack, uh, the St. Stephen attack, is becoming so balanced now that, uh, for instance, they can't double team Duncan Walker because they just say one of these other guys will pick up, uh, you know, just pick up where, where he's left off. Uh, and basically, when that happens, what you got to do is uh, dig down a little deeper on a man to man and. Uh, just simply will the guy or will yourself not to let the guy get by you and play good defense. Is it possible for them to come back or are they out of it? If, know, if, if, I think if they don't uh, knock off four or six points of this lead by the 10 minute mark, then the game's over. I think if they don't start scoring in the next two minutes, it's all over anyway. Because Walker just killing them. Yeah. He just out there, he, he's not even working That's, now. He's uh, he's rolled up a few. Well, he's got eight and a half. He's not eight. And it had, I mean, he could have had 20. Yeah. And again, Becker that, is not making the shots no. he's going to make. Well, that's deflected. And I think that's going to go back to St. Stephen. But with 12.41 left and they're up 20, they can, if they want it, they can sit on the ball the rest yeah. of the game. Well, as you can see, we're at the UNB uh, Aiken Center. Nice facility, excellent facility, beautiful basketball gymnasium. And right now what we're watching is a basketball team running a clinic. They got behind 6-0, it looked like a total blowout. But anybody who knows Donnie Walker knows he'll have patience and take it easy. Connick is on yeah, right there he's as coming well, the yeah. Game. Look at okay. Wilson, he's just taking his stuff. Wilson just saying, look, I'll pass off and I'll stop the fast break. And that to me is the kind of guy that Derek Wilson is out yep. there. But his dad was like that as a player of sports as well. His mom had a girls basketball program in St. Stephen High that was, I still don't think, can compare it to anything that we have today. It was so good. Ball on Walker. That's his third. St. Stephen are now getting into a situation where maybe they don't want to get in as, as they're heading for a bonus. Hasty will come back on and Duncan will go off and Duncan gave, as far as I'm concerned, everything he had. Donnie Walker's telling them that. Yeah, yeah, he put in, uh, he's played a, a good game so far. He played a good 20 minutes, I would think, of the, of the 32 out there, wouldn't you? Yeah, or, yeah. or close to it. No, yeah, he came in very early and uh, played very well. Still got good ball motion. Oh, Steve Chapman's got a nice offense against this. He's got a nice offense. Just that his kids aren't taking the proper shot. No. That's Perry, isn't it? No good. Rebounded inside, and we got a foul. And that's going on St. Stephen again, and that's going on Scott. That's his third. St. Stephen got four guys with three fouls, and they're all the guys that they don't want to lose. That's right. But again, the next foul is going to put Tanemeyer at the line. And with, you know, 10 or 11 minutes left, that's dangerous. But we saw them go, Tanemeyer go 12 minutes in the, in the first half and not give up that yeah. end, that bonus. 
Matt, out of control on that one, but rebounded inside. Oh. Well, we're gonna foul on that. That one's on Perry, and I think Mr. Perry has picked up his fourth this time. Yes. So they went out well, they both get a seven. Let's see, I'm gonna make a bet and say uh, Tannemeyer will give up the bonus first because of their aggressive defense. Yeah. St. Stephen are just, hey, they're up 20. And you know, Kev, that could be insurmountable. Yes, well, they, we're getting down to that 10 minute wall. Well, not only that, but I'm just saying the way they're going inside, yeah. they, they, they are not being, well, they're not, they're not, it's just a pass. It's not a fake, it's just a pass and a turnaround. See, now Becker did what, what Hasty and Scott aren't doing. He bounced the ball. And I think that's gonna go on Hasty, isn't it? No, Wilson. No, I went on Wilson in a second. It tells you how much I know. I guess I already did 10 seconds ago. You gave me 10 seconds. By the way, St. Stephen are on the sponsor page or Fundy Cable, that's who's company that uh, does all the work that we do and community TV is great, but you can't do without people like that. Tom Henniger and all the people at the front office as well, Bob Anson at our studio, Koshal Hattie, the ex-Montreal Canadian fan, Wilton. You know, I think Wilson could score or drive anytime he wants. That, yeah. That's what I think when he gets the ball. Boys, I like that half hook. Yeah. That's what Jack Sickman does when he plays. Just gets up Tom Chambers and just get up. And and 20 years ago, a coach wouldn't allow that. Matt stops, pops, and it uh, goes. He's got seven. But I think it's too little too late. They've only scored uh, eight points this half. St. Stephen has scored 23. They've only scored 23 to eight after being down seven. That's quite a difference, Kevin, it in sure any is. man's league. Oh, uh, Wilson again on the dish, but it'll come back. 10.38 left, and I, I, I think, Uncle Tony, I think we may have picked the wrong winner tonight, haven't we? Are you gonna admit that yet, Tony? Are you still going red and white now? I like him, he's a gutsy guy. He's a gutsy guy. <laughs> Puts in a lot of time, that boy does, I'll tell you. Oh, it's dark out now, is it, Kevin? Yeah, hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, hard to believe. Good turnaround, and uh, I'll tell you, he shot that out of control, but there was two guys on the weak side to get it. Look at this. St. Stephen must have had four taps on that before Tannemeyer got yeah. it. You know, I don't mean to be rude, but I think it's time to start bombing, Yeah. you know, for Tannemeyer. Yeah, well, they got to get some points in a hurry, Ken. We're coming up on that 10-minute mark. But do they have one who can do it? I think Finley might be uh, might be the guy. They haven't had much luck on the rims, though, have they? No, no, they've had a lot just flipping in and out on them. Boys, I'm glad Will, uh, Derek's got those ankle casts on because I would say they saved him about 13 times, 14 times in this ball game when he's gone down. But the bottom line right now is St. Stephen are having fun out there. Looks like Gee's getting ready to come on. But you see what they're doing, Kevin, I don't have to say to you, but to the fans, they're just out there taking a beautiful shot following through. Sure. Out of control on that one, Becker, but we got a foul, a holding foul, and I guess I was wrong. That's going on Trevor Perry. That'll be his third. Coming on will be Gee. Looks like he thinks it's five. We're not that far off, are we? Casey coming on, Connick going off. Connick was out there and they had a run of 10, 10 to two. And if the Titans are gonna come back, they better do it soon because if they don't, St. Stephen's gonna get 80 and in order for them to get 80, Jeepers, they gotta score 44 points in the next nine minutes and they've only scored, and this is how I look at it as coach, and they've only scored 36 in the first uh, yeah. 31 minutes. In yeah. other words, I think it's over. Yeah. Well, Ken, uh, you know, as we said before, at the 13-minute mark, they had to make the quick move then to try to whittle it down, you know, four or six in a hurry. They didn't. St. Stephen scored six. Yeah, so, uh, you know. Well, that foul went against. Yeah, I got it down, Trevor Perry. That was his third. But from now on, Tanamar will go to the line. But you can't go to the line, Kevin, to keep, keep the ball out and pass the ball perimeter. But I respect one thing about Becker. He hasn't quit. No. Nope. Some guys who've had a frustration, like he's gone through, you know, might, might, but that makes it 60 38. I don't know if Tanamar is going to get 50. But I'll tell you this, Scott's been hit on that one by Nat Garrow, and that's going to be third. his third. But Scott will go to the line. Well, Rick and I will have uh, Donnie Walker on after the basketball game. And I don't know who to pick, but I like Derek Wilson. Not, because I don't think we should pick the high score every time. But if you have somebody else you want to get for us as well, because I think we can concede the game. No, I think it, it'd have to be Derek Wilson or uh, or Duncan Walker. 
Yeah. And, uh, I, I think Wilson sort of took control early. He missed a few hoops going down the lane there, but, uh, you know, good presence all over the floor. I'll tell you, another boy who could be in there, too, is Hasty. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's very quietly half, rolled up. The first day. Yeah. yeah, quiet 22. Good boy, he's, he's played well in there, 62, well, 38. He's made the shots, Ken, that the big guys have to make. Nice move by Becker. Nice move by Becker. I, that wasn't Perry, was it? I think it was. Gee, I know. Uh, Becker, Becker just picked up a foul. Yeah, He's going to be gone. We don't have to worry about Becker anymore. No. That caught Ken. Uh, got his shoulders turned slightly. Couldn't play with the feet. Uh, Chris, is, Chris is gone on this. It's five. They'll take their minute for sure. Well, who do you go to on the bench? You got Obi out there. E out there and Matt. I guess he might bring might bring Finley back in. I don't know. Finley's still sitting down, but I guess the rule is he can't stand up or go to the onto the court. If he does, then, then he's automatically on the floor in the minute's up. But this has been a fast-paced ball game. Even sure though it's 62-40 and it is a blowout, it's been fast-paced. And I think, to be very honest with you, Kevin, Tanamar had a 6-0 run, and then they had four or five rebounds in a row with Becker passing the ball out instead of shooting it inside. Finley did the same thing, and, and uh, Trevor Perry, or Tony Perry, and I think if they had a shot the ball, maybe drawn the foul or gone up, could have been 10, 12, nothing. I think St. Stephen would have had to change their offense. But all they allowed is, is St. Stephen to play their offense after that six-zip run. Yeah, uh, good point, Ken, because I think that would have just put a, a you know a completely different pressure on, the, or a completely different perspective on the whole ball game, and St. Stephen would have been forced perhaps to play a little differently. I mean, we saw the other night, uh, with the Lady Black Cats, the first half against St. John, uh, you know they 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 weren't really doing the things that that got them where they are, and uh, you know they had the tie or the you know they were close at halftime, and they were able to blow it open in the second half. Uh. Well, if you have to change your offense when you're down 12 nothing, usually or 10 nothing, usually you're, the defensive team you're going at has a lot of inspiration as well. Yeah, they start believing in themselves. Didn't go, and it's going to go to St. Stephen on hustle. Nice play. You know, Wilson could score. He could shoot that ball there all day if he wanted to. I know he could, and I don't mean to yeah. put down the Tanamar kids, but Wilson showed me something tonight. I think he's a senior, and as a senior, he's going to make sure everybody's in the offense, which he did. Oh, nice play. Scott, power move underneath. Gee, nice play. Chris Finley not shooting the ball, is it? No, and I think he's one of the guys that can shoot the ball on that team, Ken. Perry hasn't either. Perry's been holding on the ball out there. That's Gee. Had the shot. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know why they're holding on to it there. Then you dribble in, and he's got the basket, but he just dribbled into the defense. Tony Perry's uh, got 12. He's leading, definitely leading Tanimer by a long shot. Watch this. That was a good look pass. There's Duncan's biggest problem. That's Duncan's only problem. He picks up that pivot foot down there too quick. But I don't think anybody's going to be driving home tonight to you, other than unless they're in Franklin. There's a kid I'm impressed with as well as Gee. He and that have played really well. Oh, they they're sure not have. getting any help. No, they got a lot of heart. They're down 20, but the boys, I'll tell you, Becker shot out, but he's showing me a lot of class cheering the team on. 8.14 left. I, I mean, it's not over, but. I, I think it is because St. Stephen, the middle is wide open, and they can allow Tanamar a run of 10 or 12 and still be up 10, and, sure. and that's, that, that's important right now at this stage. But maybe bombing outside would not be the answer for Tanamar unless they have, you know, they have a bomber. But I still think getting the ball across to Mark Obey right there is, is very important. But you can't act, you gotta take that stuff. Yeah. Scott on the boards, Wilson coming up. Wilson in the front court, he dished off, and not a bad looking jump shot by Perry, baby. You take Perry's point total, Kevin, if you can for me, and I bet you he's close to leading that team again. Yeah, he's got 17 so far in the game. Wrong, 19. Yeah. He's got, has he got a couple of threes, or am I wrong? He's got, on he's got one. One. I had him down for one in the first half, so they may not have given it to him. Uh, with a timeout like that, Tanamar is down 20 with 7.26 left. The pressure hasn't worked. Their offense, well, they've got 46 points and they had 28 to half, so they scored 18 points. There's something, there's something wrong. 
and Steve's trying to get it ironed out, and he's trying to hold on to the ball long enough to make the offense go better, but I don't know if they're clicking tonight. They started hot, and then all of a sudden, boom, they look up, and they're down 12-6. Yeah, well, you know, as we said before, too, Ken, I think you hit it on the head when uh, they had to run a 6 nothing. Uh, it probably should have been 12 nothing before. Uh, I really think that, Kevin. I don't mean to mislead no. you, but I really think it should have been Before St. Stephen got on yeah. the board. And, uh, you know, once that happens, again, you know, playing from, you know, double figures behind immediately in the first few minutes of the ball game is kind of tough. 7.26 left. The only thing tough right now is what St. Stephen's going to do in the last... Uh, I, I think the next four minutes, St. Stephen will hold on to the ball a little bit longer, Kevin, but I, th I still think they'll take that inside shot if they get it on the baseline oh, sure. of the center post. Yeah. I don't think they'll, you know, I don't think they'll pass up the opportunity for an easy hoop, but I think you'll see that... Uh, they may try to go, you know, almost 30 seconds each time down the floor. Tell you a little secret, Kevin. I haven't kept stats here, but I don't think Tannemeyer scored any more than four baskets in the middle. And I'll bet you St. Stephen has scored four in the last eight minutes. Oh, well, if you had some kind of a shot chart, yeah. And uh, especially with Becker out of the game, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Perry made one in tight there just down the floor, but they don't have somebody that consistently go into the middle and bang in, uh, bang in for the hoops. They don't have a Derek Wilson who just... If this game is close, I'll tell you, Wilson will be shooting. Oh, uh, There's yeah. a center position shot we're talking about again. That's Jamie Parsons out there right now, isn't it? Wearing number seven for the first time. Yep. I like his composure. He, he rebounded with the big boys on that one. Seven minutes left in the ball game. Kevin Robinson and the cable sitting here, and it's been a long weekend, but a nice weekend. A nice weekend. Glad we don't do hockey, though. Oh, nice shot. Look at Walker. That's going to go on. Finley. Yeah. That's his fourth, third. Third. Well, it's house cleaning time now. Well, it's either two shots or one and one for both ends now, so it doesn't matter. And I give him the bonus, so he'll be up there for one and one. Oh, Duncan's had himself a pretty good ball game. Yeah, he sure has. Good looking shot rotation there, Ken. And the thing I'm looking at is a monitor, and you can pick it up. To you kids that are watching this, you watch this kid's follow to Watch it. For, they're going to see it from the release. Look at that. Look. Yep. Oh. I don't know what school these guys have gone to do camera work, but boy, I'll tell you, folks, I like to have that on Jock Talk and replay it over and over, because that's the way you shoot a free throw. 68-46. Nat goes up a little bit out of, a lot of out of control. Duncan couldn't handle the ball, but he dished it off. Good play by Chris Finley. I'm just not seeing that, Kevin. I'm no. sorry. Good break. Hasty goes up, and he's got it. He's had a big second half. He's had 12 both halves, hasn't he? I yeah, think. Yeah, 24 for the game. So that's so correct, is it? Yes. I like keeping the stats. Uh, these sheets have come in hand, handy when you do that. Oh, what a steal. Didn't go for Casey. St. Stephen is still burning the crust out there now. Oh, what a play. John Casey. I think they've done that a few times. It's only Casey's fourth point, but he's, he's been out there hustling on defense. Six minutes left, 72-46. Nice jab, and... Uh, they got Hasty for yeah, reaching in. Yep, yeah, and that would be three on him. I guess Chris Finley's gonna come off, and... Uh, Tony Perry's coming on here. Yeah. Like Chris, he's played well. Coming on for St. Stephen, wearing number nine is Gerald Greenlaw. Going off is Derek Wilson. No, they're gonna take off number 13. Trevor Perry. So one Perry comes on, Tony, and the other Perry goes off, Trevor, and 5.57 left in the ball game, as you can see, 72-46. And no good at Duncan Walker, NBA-style rebounded. Look at Derek. Derek's on the run up into the front court. He's going to get that one, folks. No? Nice shot, though. Casey on the boards. He's pump faked, and he threw it. No good. But I do believe number 15, Mr. Wayne Hasty, has played the game of his life. Yes. 26 now? That's not bad. That used to be an eternity for a lot of players. Oh, yeah. And he's done it by passing the ball, but he's, he's had a lot of inside shots for three, Nat. And no good, but a nice-looking shot. Yeah, it sure was. Coming up into the front court, Wilson. Oh, what a feed. What a feed. That's going on hasty, and he's picked up his fourth. But I'll tell you something. If I were wearing number nine, Gerald Greenwell, I'd, I'd say thank you to Wayne for picking up that one. Oh, yeah. Scott's going to take Hasty off. Uh, well, I don't know how many seniors St. Stephen have, but they're all playing like seniors tonight. 
It's gonna be a down year for Donnie next year, and I don't know how many seniors Tandemar have, so we might not see these two teams for a while. But they're both competent coaches, and I don't mean that to put them down, but they do a fine job. Sure do. Two quality teams. Oh, you can see that on their, on their court presence out there. That's Gee. Gee's got uh, nine, and Matt has seven. I wonder if they compare and they go home. I don't think they do, because they seem to the kind of kids that worry more about how the team's doing than anything else. That Duncan Walker's a piece of work, that Ken. That Duncan Walker is a piece of work, Kevin, and you get that right. Scott rejected by Perry, and we're gonna go the other way with Nat on the dribble. He had Guy on the left and didn't see him. Oh, baby, that was a nice move. They're making moves of 20 years ago the kids didn't dream of, yeah. let alone do. Yeah, something you'd only see out in the court, you know, out in the playground or something. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, I can't describe that because I was, I was mesmerized. Oh, we got a bad anchor. Yeah, I think that's Tony like Perry down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he'll have to get, he'll have to get uh, Chris Finley to come on, I think, because he's not fouled out yet, is he? No. But the UNB training staff are here, and that's one thing we want everybody to know. Anybody who's injured at any time will be looked after very capably and very quickly. And that, Kevin, is very important, I know, as a parent. Uh, when they see their, their young man or the young lady on the floor, that there's someone there to help them. Sure. But I'm glad you're not tired. <laughs> yeah, that's me with a hawk shirt over my hand behind my head. That's the pillow. 74-47, a comfortable 27 and an easy 27 lead since the second half when yeah. it was 35-28 at the end of the first half. Yes. Well, that's... we're gonna get him up and help him off, but I'm sure the ice isn't gonna make that feel any better. Okay, we got a sub coming on. I'm wearing number 13. We'll both check on that. That's uh, Scotty McCloskey. Gosh, they got some big, stocky guys. No wonder the football team's so strong. And they do have a fantastic football program. As Steve Chapman and Jeff Parsons are coaching this team, and David uh, Barnett and Stephen Crawford are the managers, and as a junior high coach, I can tell you, without the managers, you don't have a team. Ooh, three. Would be interesting to see them make a couple, but Scott traveled on that one. Yeah, it didn't turn it over fast enough when he got control of the ball, Ken. And uh, Steve's gonna have Jeff Finley come on with Chris out there as well, I think. Or Chris is still on the bench. That's good. Boys, I'll tell you, old Nat, if he ever made a couple of those, He's got pretty good body control, but he's just playing on the edge of being out of control. Yes, yes. Derek Wilson on the bounce, on the bounce pass again. They go inside, and again, they rebound well. We got a foul right there. That, is that Connie? Yeah, I believe it's gonna go on him. No, that's gonna go on uh, Greenlaw. Sorry. And coming on will be Jeff Finley. And wearing number four, so he's gone to the bench now is Mike Fleming, so I guess he's saying the same thing we are. Let's get a few more kids out there, and I respect Coach Chapman for doing what he's oh, doing. Oh, yeah, I think. sure. I had a little guy the other day go on the court. He's five foot nothing. He said, what do you want me to do, Coach? I said, dunk it. <laughs> and I tell you, he's the kind of kid that probably would have done it if he could have. Can you see what Wilson can do, though? Can you see what he can do with the pass? I, I don't think he's had to work the whole night, do you? He started off making some pretty poor passes, and then Coach Walker just settled down, and yeah, he did. He sure has. Foul one against Jeff Finley there. Wilson for a one and one I don't think he's taking a shot this half, has he? He hasn't got a basket. Travel. He's been so busy passing. But, of course, you got to remember there's a lot of young kids out there for Tanamar right now. Yep. And a few young ones out there with St. Stephen. That was good court presence right there by Greenlaw. Don't you think? Yeah, it was to come across. You know, he was on the on the verge of having the five seconds called on him for not getting the play, and uh, Wilson broke loose on this side. Good pass uh, right across the court. Well, Rick and I will do the post game and the wrap up on the tournament. It, I know this is the last game that's going to be on the tapes, our last game of the season. But, boys, that's. Nice move by Hasty. He and Scott play so well and look the same. Sometimes you think it's Scott putting the ball in the net when it's Hasty and vice versa. Oh, nice shot by... Yeah, it was Jeff Finley. By Finley. Duncan Walker coming back out with 3.46 left. I think he'll bring off Hasty or, 
for Scott to give it, you know, let them earn it. Coming over St. Stephen wearing number six will be John Casey again. No, he took it off the kids. And Hasty is going off. I don't think you see Hasty the rest of no, the game. No, no. Played a whale of a game. 12 points in the first half and uh, a whole hockey sock full in the second half. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Nice shot. That's Parsons, isn't it? Yep. First point of the game for him. Good looking shot on that free throw line. Yes, it is. Well, the, the second one didn't look as good. He tensed up, but the first one looked real good. Well, 76-49, and it's just a, I don't know what to say, but it's just class time to show how both these teams will, will finish off the year. I like some of these kids he's put out there. They are working hard. Oh, good power, good move, but the bottom line was the pass, and St. Stephen can't hold it, but I guess they do. They're gonna come across to, to who else? Wilson's gonna do something. Oh, he got smocked on that one. I'm a little surprised, uh, Ken, that uh, St. Stephen had put the players back on the floor that they did. Now, I don't know the reason for that. I, I honestly don't. I'm sure Donnie would have an answer for it, but where he's not here, I can't say anything. But why aren't they shooting a bonus? Was that a player control foul? I think so. I didn't pick up the motion on it. But Tanemar, I said this would be the best game of the tournament. It certainly is. It started out like it was going to be. Good hustle right there. I got to check his number because he hasn't been on much. And that's uh, Mike, Mike Fleming. But these young guys from Tanemar may be, you know, this may be his team for next year. And this is good to get him on the Aiken Center floor. This kid can shoot. And I mean, he can shoot really, really well, but we're gonna get a foul underneath. Yeah, he's coming back with Connick right now. Yeah, and that foul was on Wilson. I yeah. think he's taking him out of the game. Yeah. Not because of the foul, of course. Well, 76-49, the Hawks lost five zip today, so I've had a real great day. Yeah, wow. Uh, the Leafs on TV tonight. I don't if think they're so. on the West Coast, we're certainly gonna have lots of time to watch the opening period because it's uh, five after 10 in the evening. We've been here for 12 and a half hours. So I don't think we have to say any more about that, do we? No. <laughs> I know we don't want to. Let's save our voices. Uh, Connick on the dish to Walker. That, you know something that is the weakest point for Walker. He's still getting called for that travel. But you know, that's not putting him down because that's the only weak point I see from that boy in, yeah. in what he's done. Oh, he's quite a player, Ken. But it's just through the motions right now, 76-50. 2.30 left, and both benches have just about emptied. Well, more Tanemar, wouldn't you say, uh, yes. Kevin, than anything? Yeah. But we'll see what happens here on this part of it, just to see if, well, that's for three. Nice looking shot, rebounded inside, and some of these kids that are playing now. That's Jeff Finley. Yeah, Finley's impressed me, and so's Fleming. Yeah. Finley's played well, but when you, when you got a brother on the same team, you always play better, you think. Finley's on the floor all the time, look at him. What's going on, on Chris, or uh, Jeff? Yeah, here we go. They're all coming off now. Well, let's get their numbers here, Kevin. If you can help me, I got okay. Glenn Gullison wearing number eight. And wearing number 11 uh, is Ray Bell. Yeah, and uh, Greenlaw's back in the game wearing number nine. And I thought Jason McKnight wearing number five. Is it? Is he, I, I think he's gonna co probably he's come next. in for the yeah, shooter. Okay. He can't wait, he's saying make him. <laughs> come on, Trevor. 77.50, I said 80 would do it, and I think 80 was comfortable. I tell you, very impressed. Very impressed with the St. Stephen Spartans basketball team, but I think them playing AAA teams a lot has helped them. Oh, them. yeah. You know, playing KV and FHS has done nothing to bring them up a notch. Sure. They've got some good looking kids out there, these two ball clubs. I, they may be back. Oh, good drive. Fleming. Nice drive. Good first step. Yeah. It's going to be fun to watch these kids play because they're not going to light up for the last minute or so. Oh, Finley with good the steal. steal by Finley. Watch him go. Oh, nice move. Yeah, it was. Nice little dip inside. 78-52. I like that move. That kid, he showed us a lot, hasn't he? Sure has. You're only as weak as your coach, and these two guys are coaching a good job. 
Connick made the dish, and uh, Gullison brings it back to Connick, and he travels. Yeah, shuffled his feet. Well, we're going back the other way. Tannemar want to get a few more. Oh, yeah. I don't blame him. Oh, nice move between the legs there by Finley. Yeah. Good shot. Three. No, two. No, two. He's it's put up five. It's sort of been fun to see the two brothers out there, Chris and Jeff. He's going to be a good one. He is going to be a good one. Walk. Yeah. That's not his call. No. And I don't care who's watching the team. Yeah. Brian Woodfield was there, and he doesn't miss him. I don't like that. I, even though the game's wide open, I don't like that because I Brian's doing his job, and that makes it look like he isn't. Obi for two, no good, and rebounded on the other side. Picked up the foul. That's going to go against McCluskey. McCluskey. Yeah. But 47 seconds left. That's that's irrelevant. But Rick and I'll be down to wrap it up. I don't know whether we're going to have a post-game guest or just wrap it up so the crew can finish off the ball game. But I'll check with Rick and see what he what he says. So uh, if you want to comment a bit on the final bit here. Okay. Connick's going to the line. He'll be shooting one in a bonus. Thanks, Kevin, very much. I guess we're just going to wrap it up, guys, because it's been a long day for the guys in the truck. Sure They've has. been here since 9 this morning, and it's 10 tonight. You're talking 13, 14 hours. So we'll wrap it up, Rick and I'll get down, Kev. And if you don't mind just making a few comments as uh, we get down there, and I do appreciate what you've done, boy, and I'm sure hoping you're going to be around next year. Oh, yeah, you, look, you promised me you have, Yeah, eh? looking forward to it. And you're going to do some play-by-play. -play. I'll work a schedule out for you, because I'm not... Uh, I'm not the guy that owns the rights, and some people <laughs> should realize there's a lot of talent in this town, and between you and Rick Stocker, we really have had a great time on the weekend. And it's been nice to have Rick do those interviews, Kevin, because it's helped us a lot. Oh, yeah. Foul went against Mark Obey there. Connick back on the line. Seventy-eight fifty-four, twenty-six 26 seconds left, and Steve Chapman and those kids down there in Tanamar. Your kid's never good on you, boy, and I'm impressed the way you run that program. I really am. This guy's a quality coach. Nothing but class. And boy, you see it in their football program, you see it in their basketball program, and it's nice, it's nice to know your kids aren't playing for a team where the coach doesn't humble them. Yep. He has been critical of those kids all night, you know that? And now there's Donnie. We watched one coach in one of the games. And there's no question that, that he lost his cool a couple of times, but that's irrelevant now with the score 80-54. We're finishing it off, and Rick and I'll go do it in a hurry. Nice play. Yeah, it was. Parsons sliding down Look there. Look at this one. Tell you, Tanimer's having some fun out there right now. Sure are. And Finley is going to go to the line again. I like this guy. Yeah, he's played well. That foul's going against Connick. Yeah, I, I stopped counting the fouls there after. <laughs> I figure with 10 seconds left. I like Finley's touch. He, he really... Uh, he's going to be a player, Ken. There's no doubt about it. You know, if he gets three more points, he's going to tie Chris. If he gets two more points. He's got six. We're going to foul on Jeff. But they're keeping the press on, and they're doing everything they can to make it respectable, and they have. Uh, I think 80-55 is indicative of how strong the Spartans play tonight. It just shows you if you keep your composure, though, you're not going to have any problems if you're, if, if you're a better team. This Connick, this Connick looks good, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got a nice touch. And, you know, he'd come out with the scores fairly close, so he must be a pretty good sub as well. Drops them both again. Yeah, you're right. 82-55, we got a line violation. And the Spartans will inbounds the ball for the last time in 1989. Woo. Well, every time I put the hex on them, it ends up they do it one more time. We're going for three. <laughs> That's it. 82-55. The Spartans have repeated. Kevin, if you wouldn't mind giving a summation there, my friend, and I'll get down with Rick. Okay. Thanks, Kevin, very much, my friend. Okay. For the St. Stephen Spartans, totals for the game. Derek Wilson with five points. John Casey with six. Trevor Perry with 21. Mike Scott with six. Wayne Hasty with 28. Tim Connick with four. And Duncan Walker with 16.
for the Tantramar Titans. Nat Garrow with seven. Christopher Becker with six. Tony Perry with 14. Chris Finley with eight. Guy Garrow with eight. Jeff Finley with six. Jamie Parsons with two. Uh, Mark Obey with four. Close in the first half. St. Stephen made a run, took the game away. Outplayed Tanjamar badly in the second half, and that's been the difference in the game. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. your alarm clock set for six too, is it? All right. Well, Kenny, that uh, ball game right there, I think, came right down to uh, two basic parts of basketball, probably the most uh, important ones, all as far as I'm concerned, anyway. And that is that uh, Tanchamar had a real tough, tough night shooting the basketball, and uh, St. Stephen could make the shots. And the second thing was, both teams are good rebounding teams, but. Uh, Tanchamar, I think, got, got out rebounded just a bit. Okay, I don't know what the edge would be as far as uh, percentage or anything like that was concerned, but uh, you know, I think that was it. And then, of course, uh, proverbial turnovers uh, that that hurt Tanchamar. And you know, when you turn the ball over, and the other team goes down, scores. And then you take the ball back down. You work through your offense, and then you miss a shot. Yeah. And you know, you or you miss a rebound, then uh, that makes it very difficult to uh, to win. And and this game was. Uh, a seven point ball game at the end of the first half and Tanchamar went a long time seven without and scoring. Minutes. And as I talked to Steve uh, before the game and he said uh, one of the critical things that they had, had happened in their loss to uh, St. Stephen before was the fact that they went for seven or eight minutes without wow. scoring. And here was another one of those droughts that uh, took its toll. Rick. I thought the turning point of the game was a 6 nothing run in the beginning. Becker had three absolutely open layup shots yeah. and he dished off and got back yeah. out to Nat and Gee. Yeah. And I think, if I really believe this, Donnie Walker's got a good ball club. Oh, yeah. And I think if they had to get down 12 nothing, he wouldn't have had the composure yeah. Yeah. as he did when it was only 6 nothing. Yeah, that's true, Kenny. There's a, you know, there's a point where uh, a team just, all of a sudden, they just lose it and uh, you know, that, that was the point, the breaking point. You know, and if, if Tantramar had scored another basket, uh, maybe it would have gone some other way. That, that was my feeling. Yeah. I honestly mean that, Rick. And you yeah. and I both coached enough and still are coaching to know that when you're down 12 nothing, you're going to lose. And that makes the other team's defense yeah. work hard. Oh, yeah. You say, hey, boys, we yeah. got them. Yeah. Well, you could just see the pickup, Kenny, couldn't you? Eh? Every time uh, Tantramar turned the ball over, St. Stephen went down and scored. Of course, St. Stephen became that much more uh, satisfied with what things were going on. It was a lot more fun. Yeah. And Tantramar yeah. yeah. was a lot more work and, and, pressure. Uh, and pressure. And you, you know, they had to make the next shot. And that was a problem. Well, 82-55, the final score. Tanham are, are going home again, losers, but I, I'll tell you, they got some good, this young Jeff Finley's on the boys look pretty yeah. good out there. Well, they'll be tough Rick, for a couple of years. Rick, I want to thank you, and I want to thank Tony, Kevin, and all the guys and the girls who've been here doing the cameras for the last uh, two days. We've had the easy job, buddy, and we know it, yeah, even though right. we're tired. Oh, yeah. Coaching the guys in the truck.